This might very well be the ultimate point and shoot device. This is the brand new Impact 4000 Ballistic Rail Mounted Laser Range Finder. Quite a mouthful from Vortex Optics. In today's video, we're gonna be going over it. I'm gonna be mounting it on the rifle behind me. I'm gonna tell you guys what it is designed for, who it is for, what kind of use cases you can expect from it. At the end of this video, there might even be a link for you to click and see this in a hunting environment. Without further ado, let's open this box because I cannot wait. Here we go. Now in the past, this is sort of what our options was for a ballistic laser range finder. We had the Fury in the Vortex line and then recently the Razor 4000 with the Geo Ballistics built in. Now this is basically a rifle mounted version of this. Long story short, it's going to allow you to stay on your rifle, hit the little button, it's going to range your target whether that is in a match environment or a hunting environment or however you decide to um, use this technology. It's going to give you a ballistic solution. You can either engage that target by holding over in your optic if you're using sort of like an EBR7C reticle or sort of a modern reticle or you can actually dial that in if you want to be 100% precise. You know if it's a 2.7 mil or whatever the case maybe you can dial that in precisely. So that is a very layman's term explanation of what this is. What we're going to do next Let's open this sucker up and I'll run you guys through the features. Now I also need you guys to know this, that I've had this for longer than a month and I haven't looked inside this box because I wanted to have my reaction on video. So without further ado, Impact 4000. Ooh! <laughs> this oh snap, the color is actually a little bit different than on the box. That's like badass. Man, this is flipping cool. Oh, it's quite heavy. Oh, that's badass. <laughs> I feel so tactical. Uh, that's bye-bye cool. Oh, dude. Okay, let's get this on the rifle as soon as possible. That's freaking built, sturdy. Holy moly, it just feels like rock solid. Okay, and then you have the little module remote that is over here where we'll still have to figure out what which buttons do. That is super, super cool. I'm gonna try and get us some nice close-ups of this. A uh, little screen on the back. Obviously the batteries in here, I don't think the batteries are in there yet. But we'll run through all the features. Sorry, I'm a little bit just coolness factor, so bear with me. Um, okay, what else do we have in the box? Obviously, and this is one of those products where you might want to read the manual, right? Okay, so we've got some protection stuff. I think there's also mounted protected learner. That's pretty cool. What always amazes me is how far ahead these guys work on products. It's crazy. Like, I've had this for a month, as I said. It is now the beginning of July. This will only be out later in the year. Um, and... Uh, it always amazes me how the packaging is done and everything like so far in advance, way further than uh, what people realize. Different mounts for our remote control. This is key mod it looks like. Then that should be M-Lock because I can see the little M-Lock sign on there. And then this is going to be a normal Picatinny style mount. So it's really cool if you're running sort of a modular, you know, uh, M-Lock forehand or something like that. You can just pop this guy in. Actually, this is the M-Lock one. Just pop it in and you are set and there's like a little clip here i'm assuming this is going to go there and then just like that you have your little remote very very cool and uh yeah let's get this sucker mounted shall we but before we do that we also have like a nice protective cover for it and some tools that are specific to this product to see everything is out here because when we put this on we don't want to damage it i think it's relatively universal but this goes on there for when you're not using it. Very cool, okay, let's make some space. We're gonna need the M-Lock one. We're gonna put all of this away. We've got a cleaning cloth. We're gonna pop the battery in, but first, let's grab the rifle. This is my little six dasher. At the moment, I'm running it in this Timber Frontier chassis from MDT. Okay, so as I said, I've already got the diving board mount on there. I'm gonna need a tool to loosen these guys. Yeah. 
<laughs> this bio cool. Now, as always, when you're mounting stuff, remember this rifle is going to recoil. So when you're tightening stuff down, just give it a little forward motion so it seats against that to make sure that there's no sort of dead space for it to move into under recoil. Now, full disclosure, I got wildly sidetracked after I put in the battery and I fired up the unit and I started messing around with the remote in the manual blown away by all the features this has. Let's get back to the premise of the video. Who is this for and who is it not for? So first of all, it's not for shooting precision rifle matches. It's not designed for shooting targets that are of known distance. This is designed for unknown distance matches or hunting environments. Okay, so whether you're going out on a sort of a sniper competition or NRL hunter, or for me in a hunting scenario, this is perfect for that because I don't always have the ability to range find and track an animal, especially if I want to engage a specific animal. Now I have to switch back and forth between my rifle. It's a bit of a mess. This with the remote is gonna allow me to stay on my rifle, range that target as it is dynamically moving in its environment, which is gonna be a game changer for us in a hunting environment. Now, just now we're gonna circle back to whether this is legal or not for you. Now you might ask Pete, why would it be legal? Because in certain states in the US, I know that you cannot have a rifle scope with sort of smarts built into the rifle scope. So we'll circle back to that a little bit later in the video. So again, to reiterate, this is not for known distance competitions. This is not for you to put on your rifle and go run around and shoot a PRS match. It wasn't designed for that. But if you're gonna be doing NRL Hunter or dynamic sort of sniper competitions, this is gonna be a freaking game changer. This isn't smarts built into an optic because this is just a normal Gen 3 razor that we have on this with a rail mounted ballistic solving rangefinder. So it's kind of a gray area, but we highly recommend, and this is from Vortex themselves too, to check your state laws and with your agencies whether or not you can run something like this. Now on the other side of this, there is actually a little feature here where with a specific tool, you can deactivate the visible laser because that is something that might potentially be an issue, okay, for a visible light to be emitted from this, but you can turn that off completely. And I do believe, obviously we haven't zeroed this up yet, but I do believe we're only using that visible laser for when we're actually collimating this or basically zeroing it up. But again, here in South Africa, there are no laws whether or not we can have rifle scopes with sort of smarts built into them. For example, the Swarovski DS is like an all contained unit those are widely accepted here. Something also that I mentioned earlier that I didn't see a way to mount this remote if I don't have any M-Lock slots, like I'm running sort of a more traditional style stock, they do actually include the double-sided Velcro and they've actually pre-laser cut it so you can still access your battery when you decide to stick this on. So yeah, you can put that wherever your hand would naturally be. And that is actually something on the Swarovski DS that always bothered me because you would have to break your firing position to actually hit a button on the scope, whereas the remote is awesome because I can stay exactly where I need to be, just hit that button and engage my target. So that is freaking awesome and I cannot wait to take this hunting. And again, by the time you guys watch this at the end of this video, there'll be a link to a video where I'm hunting with this. Super pumped. So let's go over some of the features. Obviously this is rail mounted. I've decided to use the diving board mount. If you are running Picatinny rails, it can actually mount on the side of your rifle too. For whatever reason you wanted to run it on the side, you've got something here where it's gonna potentially interfere with that. There's nice interface on the top here. I can turn this so you can hit and manipulate all the buttons on the top here. You've also got the remote control then. Now, it's got built-in temperature, humidity, and pressure, so it's gonna give you live sort of environmental data with that. You can also put in custom wind holds and feeded wind speeds. Even further, you can link this to your Kestrel if I've got my Kestrel out somewhere, and I can feed that information directly into this unit. It's freaking awesome. Now, as with the Razor 4000 with the Geoballistics, this is also running the Geoballistic Solver which actually unlocks some super cool things and I'm excited to see where the future of this technology goes. Now being a ballistic rangefinder, it's gonna do two things for you. It's gonna give you bullet drop, in other words, how much your bullet is gonna fall in its flight towards the target. It's also gonna show you wind drift, in other words, how much your bullet is gonna arc in the wind in order to fall into your target effectively. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is the direction of the wind has quite a significant impact on the amount of drop 
that your bullet experiences. So this also allows you to capture the wind bearing, okay? In other words, where the wind is coming from. Now, if the rays are 4,000 GB, you can actually just point it into the wind. What you don't want to be doing is that a shooting competition is pointing a rifle into the wind because you might flag your fellow competitors. So that's something that you can actually do from the app. And what's really cool about that is that's going to allow you, once you've captured the wind bearing and that remains constant, as you're transitioning from different targets, it's going to account for the wind angle changing and therefore adjust your sort of wind hold on the fly, which is mega awesome. Now, the unit ships with 10 pre-programmed ballistic profiles. However, I highly encourage you if you're going to be picking up something like this to do a custom profile for your bullet at your speed because the more information you give any ballistic solver, not just this one, the better your solution is going to be. But if you're stuck in a pinch and you need to just select sort of a default load, it's going to be kind of good to go up to about three, 400 yards. Do not push the limits on that though. So again, any ballistic solver, garbage information in, it's going to give you garbage information out. So make sure you set this up and calibrate it to your specific bullet at the speed you're shooting it, and that's going to give you the best possible results. Another feature it has, you've got the ability to pre-program range cards into this, so that's also pretty cool. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind. When you're ranging a target with this, your rifle scope has to be on zero. Let's, for example, say you've engaged a target at, I don't know, six, seven hundred yards. You've got six mil dialed into your scope, six MRAD. If you've dialed six MRAD into your scope, your reticle's obviously gonna move down. So now if you're gonna be ranging again, the collimation is not gonna line up. So you're gonna have to range, okay, while your optic is on zero. Now in a dynamic shooting environment, you can range your target, as I said in the beginning, dial your 1.2 mil, engage the target. You just gotta to remember to then dial back to zero. That is a good habit to do every time you dial, nonetheless. What I would personally probably think that I'm gonna do with this, and it'll remain to be seen when I actually use this in sort of a real life environment, I'm probably just gonna shoot shooting holdovers. You know, I tend to do that when we're hunting anyway. Okay, so range of target, okay, I need to hold 0.5, and I'm just gonna go to my 0.5 line and put rounds on target. So that's probably the quickest way you're gonna be able to effectively use this, but that'll remain to be seen once we actually get this out into the field and put it through its paces. So guys, that's a brief overview of the Impact 4000. Next, I'm gonna take this out to the range. Okay, we're gonna set it up. Personally, myself, I love it when companies push the boundaries of new tech and stuff, and it makes us more effective hunters, more effective long range shooters. It's awesome. With that being said, you're always gonna get the guys saying, oh, this is pushing the limit, we've gone too far, yada, yada, yada. Personally, if you're that kind of guy, go out, hunt with a spear. I wanna be the most effective, most ethical hunter I can be. And this is one of those tools that's gonna to help me towards that. What do you guys think about this? Are you excited for this product? Price point wise, I think I'm not 100% sure. Rumor is it's gonna be under $2,000, so that's kinda of where this is gonna come in. Again, at the time of recording this, I don't have the final figures yet. For the guys in South Africa looking to pick these up, they'll absolutely be available on impactproshop.net, so perhaps there'll even be a link down below. Here is my first hunt using the Impact 4000. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, tell me what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next one.